Welcome, this is Zahn with Repro Products, and today's video is on Bluebeam Review 2016 and how to work with the tool chest. Here I am in Bluebeam Review 2016. If I look at my tab access command orange arrow and click to verify I have tool chest turned on, you'll see down here it says tool chest. I have the command turned on here. When I select it, you'll notice that there are lots of tools that are available for me to work with. I can expand any one of these um, drawers, if you will, and inside are a whole bunch of pre-made uh, tools. And so, for example, if I zoom into this area, I can left-click and then place account tool like so. I also have other types of tool chests that are available. I have one called HVAC Ducts, Symbols, and Devices. I have Symbols in general. I have Curves. And so you can go through the process of putting any one of these tool chests and any one of these features in the actual PDF file as a markup. And all your markups are tracked. Now, in regards to the tool chest, if you select this main cogwheel right here, it will open up the Manage Tools Sets window. In here, it will list all of the tool sets that you have installed within Bluebeam Review. Here, you notice some of them are named with a check and some are not. If it's checked, that means I can see it. If it's unchecked, then I don't see it. For example, if I put a check mark for this one, then it's going to load this one up, and it's called, you know, uh, Turkey Feast Homecoming. This one we built just for fun one day. If I uncheck it, it goes away. I can import any other tool chest that I want as well. I just have to download it and get it. For example, if I head over to my Bluebeam Review and head over to my folder that has tool sets, these are all the tool sets that I have downloaded, and this was a while ago. This, these are BTX files. And I can double click any one that I want or single click any one that I want and it will load it into the project. For example, trees. I hit open and now it's loaded and it's visible and it's expanded and I can use it. In this Manage Tools window, you can scroll down and you can see that it's installed and it's checked. If you need to, you can move it up the list so that way it sorts it however you like up here. If I click OK, I can then start using those tools. Okay. Now, when we go back to this window, we can also add and create our own brand new one or create one from an existing one that you already saved and specified the location. And if I create a new one, let's call this one uh, Custom Tool Chest ABC and click OK. It ends up then asking you to specify the name and the location of where you want to place it. So I'll leave it in the default location and I'll hit save. Now that I've done this, it's a blank canvas. And the reason it's a blank canvas is because I can use any markup that I want that I have already worked with in the past and I can right click it and put it into this location. So for example, if I like this particular type of markup, I can right click it, add to tool chest, and the one that I just made. Um, and uh, it'll go ahead and put it inside. If I select another one, apply to tool chest, it'll put it inside. Okay, And so I can click and drag and start to use it. Now the tool chest itself uh, will change if you are uh, on you. And it may change because you might change your profile. So if I switch to, say, the punch profile, then your tool chest will show you the tools meant for punching. And so you may lose some of the tool chests that you were working with earlier in favor of other tool chests that are checked. And that really just basically says that as I've made that profile, certain tool chests are checked here so that I can see them here. When you are working with the tools within the tool chest, depending on the type of tool that you're working with, you may have the ability to adjust how it functions. 
An example would be this one is called the rounded rectangle. If I left click it once, then I can click several times to place that markup. If I double click it, then what ends up happening is it switches um, from insertion mode, from property mode to insertion mode. So um, this is where it just inserts that tool from the default of how it was initially created. If I double click it again, it goes into the draw mode where it allows me to draw any shape that I need for that particular markup. Any one of these tool chests that you have, you can click these little cogwheels and you can adjust how it's displayed. For example, here I can say show me symbols only or click show details. I can also set them to a particular scale for using within a view um, and several views of different scales. You can also take any one of your tool chests and create a legend based upon the tool chest. And so, for example, if I put, place one here, that legend is created. And as I start drawing and putting in data, that chest, uh, tool chest legend, will automatically update, as you can see here. And that legend obviously has property information and allows you to set up any kind of appearance that you want and set up the columns and set up the fonts and everything else that you'd like. And so that is a, and then if you don't need particular tool chests, you can head back over here and then select the ones that you don't need to use anymore. For example, we'll scroll down. You'll see this one. I can select it and I can uncheck it so it doesn't display. I can modify it if I need to modify it. I can import a different icon if I need to import a different icon. Um, and you can also export them out as well. So if you have one selected, you can export that out as a BTX file and place it on your server so that all the other end users can use it on their computers as well. All they have to do is have access to the file and if they double click the file, it will actually install properly. And that's a quick video on how to work with the tool chest and the tool chest features in Bluebeam Review. Thank you for watching.